you know, I, I saw Roma in a theater especially equipped for the full circular sound, and it was absolutely stunning. Um, but I want to talk about your eye. You seem to have a very hungry eye. There is so much stimulation and density. And in one case, I saw four stories taking place in the same frame. <laughs> it was amazing. So was the black and white meant to give a, a visual rest? Black and white was there from the DNA. I didn't even question why. I, I, I didn't intellectualize why I was going to do it in black and white. I just knew that it was going to be black and white. And I'm very happy that, to hear that you, you see the frames and you see the different stories, the different stuff that is going on uh, in, in each frame. And that speaks about your eye, that you can, you actually know how to see a film. You know, uh, well, in a film, well, and a film, in, one, <laughs> yeah, but, 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 it's, but, but that's very important because uh, the circumstance that you have in the foreground is only one element of Roma, you know, it's a, a, because a, there's stuff that is happening in the background uh, that is filled with information. Some information is informs characters, some stuff is foreshadowing of stuff to come, and some uh, is more sociopolitical information going on. Um, so, and actually, uh, there are elements that throughout the film, they get, they, 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 you, we evolve visual elements in the background. So yeah, I mean, you, I, I, I could make the case that you can, uh, watch the film trying to ignore the character in the foreground and you will see a completely different, another film that is informing the main film. It's incredible. You know, at, at first I was reminded very much of the Italian and French films of the 50s and 60s, but it's just so much bigger. Uh, there's intimacy and there's vastness, and I don't know how you do it, but and there's not a lot of dialogue. Maybe that's part of it. But did you did you think of the the majesty of it? No, I I was you know I was not even thinking in terms of scope. Uh, the the process was very instinctual. Very it was almost like a stream of consciousness uh, that went directly from memories into the page, and then from the page into 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 the frame. Um, a, thinking that this this camera had to be like a ghost from the present visiting the past, and it is it is it, so much like that that when I would describe because nobody had the screenplay, so I had to describe to the production team the shots that we were going to do, and wow. uh, I would I would just describe a very matter of fact what we were going to do, not being aware of the scope. I realized the scope when I saw the reactions, you know, they, they said, oh my God, but that's huge. And I was as well, no, it's just, I don't know, it's just a simple shot in a furniture shop and we go out in the window and we see all of this stuff. But because I was more focused in the human experience happening more than right. in the size of, of, of the production. But, it's, but the way it turned out, being big and small, it's very lifelike. I mean, well, that's, uh, that's, yeah. Whatever is natural. And I just wonder how closely did you direct them if they didn't have a script? No, well, they didn't have a script, but we shot in perfect uh, chronological order. But, but not, not only the, the actors, they take, nobody, the crew didn't have a screenplay. And we shot in a, yeah. in a perfect yeah. chronological order. So everybody was learning the circumstance of the film as we were doing it. Um, and also, uh, I would give every morning some uh, dialogue to some of the characters, to other ones specific indications, but those indications would contradict sometimes each other. Uh, so it was about creating this chaos that is just, that happens in life. You know, it's just uh, nothing is really neat and easy. So they have to jump into each other to be able to, to achieve the instructions that I had given to them. Um, or simple reactions like uh, in the furniture shop when the boyfriend walks into with the gun, uh, what you're seeing is Jalisa's face looking at this guy. He, she didn't know that he was going to come into the shop. Uh, it's just stunning. Uh, what, a, what an accomplishment. Thank you so much, Alfonso. Thank you so Congratulations. much. Congratulations. Okay, Thank you.